That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Comic Reviews. I've got to go quick, quick, quick today, so, and I've got a lot of books to get through. Um, so I am going to start right away with Star Wars Poe Dameron number four. Um, I was a little iffy on the first story arc. I, you know, I enjoyed parts of it, but I wasn't, like, in love with it. This story arc that's starting up for it is really, really cool. I really like this first issue of this next story. And I'd almost argue it, you know, jump on here. Um, right away we start off with a, a really, really intense, like, uh, beginning scene with, um, Poe being held by a lot of huts, and then we figure out, you know, we see the aftermath from their last little skirmish with the First Order, and then we see how they got into this situation. They're on, like, a prison planet, and that's really neat. Um, but the thing I like most about this is it's, uh, picking up on a really interesting character that was introduced in the second volume of the main Star Wars book. Um, that book is set in between episodes four and five, and um, in it, Luke Skywalker was temporarily the captive of Gracchus the Hutt, who is like a, a Jedi fetishist. Uh, he, he collected and, and um, valued very heavily uh, Jedi artifacts and stuff. Um, and at the end of the story, the Empire kind of, like, came in and, and took him away and, like, arrested him. And so now we're picking up with him, you know, decades later. And that was real. I, I thought that was really, really clever. Uh, he doesn't quite look the same. Gracchus in that book looked really, really buff. And, like, they made a big deal out of the fact that, like, you know, there's a moment where some, um some guys from the Empire, like, have him surrounded and they think that he's no danger. They can just keep their guns trained on him. And he just grabs one of them up. It's like, Gracchus is not like the other huts. Gracchus isn't weak. And he starts tossing him around. He's like a, a buff hut. And that's a really neat idea. But it's been, you know, 40, 50 years for him now. So, or not, not quite that long. Um, I, I guess more like 30 to 40 years. So it makes sense that he's let himself go, especially since he's living in a prison. But, um, Laura Santeca, who is the guy at the very beginning of The Force Awakens, so once again, still no stakes. Less so, because there are other characters in this book that can easily die. But we know how this is going to end. This, this is all, like, this really is a prequel book to The, um, The Force Awakens, as we see Poe go on his mission to find Laura Santeca and the map to Luke Skywalker. Um, so they, he goes to meet with Gracchus the Hutt, because apparently Lor Santeca met with Gracchus the Hutt before he disappeared. Um, and they're, they're having this conversation about, like, or Poe's trying to have this conversation with Gracchus about where Lor Santeca went off to. And they walk in the room, and then there's, um... Commander Trex, or, or however you say his name. And that's just a really cool, like, it, it really does feel very Star Wars. And basically, Poe is given this ult Poe and Trex are given this ultimatum of free me, and whoever does, I will be the only one that gets the information that I have. I really like that. And, you know, they're all like, oh, you're totally screwing with us, you know, we had a deal, and he's like, we had a deal, but then Poe showed up, so you shit out of luck now. Um, <laughs> and he goes, Gracchus is just a really neat character. Um, God, where is it? Okay. Oh yes, I make lots of deals. Our original deal was before Mr. Dameron arrived. Now we have a new deal, Trex. I just doubled my odds of getting out of here. Good luck to you both. I look forward to hearing the arrangements of my escape. Please see yourselves out as he, like, soaks in a mud bath. <laughs> Just so badass. He's in prison, yet he's the one in the most control. Um, and Poe's like, you know, you made this really complicated, right? I do. Yeah. Just making sure. I really like that last panel. That's a really... This is a really, really good issue. It, let me just say, 
it was a very good week for my pull list. Not a bad book this week, which is really exciting. So I really quite enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. At first, I thought it was going to be kind of the weakest book, but the more I read the, the revelation that comes at the end, this book just really started picking up uh, speed, and it, it seems to know where it's going now, and I hope it continues with that. I was honestly considering dropping this, but after this issue, it really picked up for me. I'm excited to keep going. Let's continue on. Did I? Yeah, I clapped. I clapped at the beginning. Uh, let's continue on with, once again, one of my favorite books right now, Renato Jones, The 1% Number 3, right? 3? Yes, issue 3. Um, this one's just getting really complicated. Everything's building on itself. Um, but it still feels like it's it's still got enough just things going on on its own that it works. Um, so there are several stories in here, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to go over every single detail kind of thing. Um, some really witty dialogue, some really fun um, fun ideas, some really just fucking brutally ugly images in here. Um, I do have one complaint about, I guess, just kind of a continuity error. So we see these two in the center panel there. Um, as they're having lec being lectured to by all these people on TVs. And then the guy gets mad at hearing all this lecturing and throws someone through the, the glass panel that's like the television set. And you see a guy behind him go, Oh, I'll get the broom, sir, to clean up all the glass. And there were a lot of bodies around them, but I don't know. It feels like I missed a panel because he just kind of threw... You know, we didn't see him pick anybody up, and that just felt awkward. Um, so a little continuity error there, but otherwise it looked really good. Uh, or otherwise the book looks really good. It's dealing with a lot of just crazy shit. Um, a lot of fun. Really, really fucking cool. Uh, and we're building, we're, we're seeing that actions have consequences, believe it or not. And it's just a goddamn good book that's really creepy and freaky and it's just this building unease and, and tension um you know this really easily could have just been you know power fantasy wish fulfillment stuff and there's certainly elements of that in it and i wouldn't be surprised if uh people turned away from this for being that but actually having consequences, actually doing, taking some of the stuff that Renato Jones has done here and, and using it to build the story out and show that actions like this have consequences and that, you know, people don't just take stuff lying down is really working for the book. It's, it's really taking it places, and I quite like that. Um, so, yeah. I'm excited to keep reading this. It's a really good series, and if you can get it, you should get it. Batman Rebirth number two. God, what a fantastic issue. Um, this one wasn't quite as good as the first issue, but we are once again picking up from where Morrison left off with, you know, Batman trying to be Bat God. Now we've got, you know, superheroes with actual superpowers in Gotham City and and Bruce Wayne thinking about the long term of what happens after he dies. Um, cuz he, he has this great line. Uh There's going to be other there's going to be others, Alfred. Other planes, asteroids, aliens. I won't be able to stop them. I'll die. Then Dick will take my place. Then he'll die. I can't. There's nothing I can do. I really like that. It's just Batman dealing with how can he, as a man, take the place of a god for his city. And now that there are two other people who want to do the right thing in Gotham... And Batman's just kind of initially trusting them. He's not like, get out of my city. He's like, yeah, you're you're doing good stuff for Gotham, and I like that. You could be doing better. I <laughs> really like, you are adequate. Um, it's just kind of the Batman attitude. Um, 
there's stuff building up for Gordon and this this long term plot. Man, it's really good. Uh, there's some great dialogue between Alfred and Bruce. There's some just hilarious stuff with Batman slipping away all ninja like and people with superpowers not knowing where he went. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, so Gordon is talking to these two and they're like, well, we're here to help commissioner. We're here to save the city. And Gordon's like, well, thank the Lord. Don't know how we, how we got along without you. And then they're like, wait, where, where is he? Yeah, he does that. I'm using ultra vision, but I can't. Can you? No, I. Welcome to the team. I'm sure he'll be in touch if he needs you. I can see through everything. I can see everything. It's impossible. It's not impossible, kid. He's Batman. Man, that's really good. And then we got stuff with the Strange and, and Waller, so that's really cool, too. Um, the music of DC Comics. Hmm, interesting. Um... I just, I really like this. This is just really, it's building for Morrison, not retreading Morrison, which is what I really like about it. It it knows the characters. You know, I know he wrote an issue with Snyder, but I'm glad to see that we we might just be completely, at least in this book, ignoring Snyder because there's a line that Gordon has. Um... Where's it at? Um, there's a line that Gordon has. Is it really easier to fight crime with a mask on? I think it would itch. So that at least implies heavily that, you know, he's not been Batman. Thank God. Um, so I quite like that. Just say fuck it and move on. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Um Really good issue. I'm excited to be enjoying Batman again. Once again, it's been a really good week for comics. Uh, let's move on to Batman Beyond, number 14. You know how I keep saying it's been a really good week for comics? You know how I've talked about really not liking the direction this book has been going in lately? Yay, I like this issue. Right? Yeah. I know, you're excited too that I'm excited, right? Um... God, I've not been liking this book. 13 issues, well, four, 12 issues of bad, one issue of, ah, uh, and one issue of, yay. Um, because we're getting, you know, Terry McGinnis back. Let me find out how, um, Matt McGinnis found out Terry's secret identity is Batman, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was really cool. Like, seriously, you know why I enjoy this? Because Tim Drake isn't in the Batman Beyond costume, and it's Terry McGinnis the whole time. Imagine that. Uh, you know, it's all flashback stories, and it's Terry and, and Matt talking. Or not Terry, Tim and Matt talking, but who, who do we see in a bat suit the entire time? Terry McGinnis. Um, and we find out more details about what happened with him and, and why he's been acting as live wire recently and it's all uh, manipulation of spellbinder which i'm excited for i'm hoping that this whenever they they get terry back in the the batman beyond costume permanently that they really keep going with the um the or keep building up um terry's original rogues gallery they have shriek show up in this book they have spellbinder really manipulating behind the scenes I really hope they keep going with that, and and you know there are less restrictions writing in comic books for what you can have a uh, bad guy do and get away with, and I really hope they start to push that, um, and and really start to do things and and make these you know really scary villains and not just neat idea that they never really go anywhere with, um, because I feel like there is a lot of that in Batman Beyond, um. But yeah, really, really good issue. Uh, just, I'm glad we're finally getting this. Um, let's see, this was part three of four, so I guess... 
just know that Tim Drake was Batman Beyond and he was really, really shit at it and the world is almost over. Not his fault, but still. Uh, just know that and then go pick up issue number 12 and read from there. That that seems like the best jumping on point. Or wait till the... Um, wait two issues from now and we should ideally have Terry McGinnis be Batman Beyond again and just start picking up from there. Because I really hope they just ignore everything else that happened. Jurgens wrote this. Um, I don't know if he's going to be continuing. Like, I really think he did the best with what he could, but it's just such a... It's, it just... Ugh. So much of this doesn't work. Um, so I'm glad to see Terry coming back. That's, that's what I'm really happy about. Woo! Moving all right along to Sam Wilson, Captain America, number 11. Um... Now, this issue has more to do with Civil War than the last issue did. Because the last issue was just this really, um, you know, somber, let's take a break from the story and acknowledge the death of this character. And really, you know, even if he comes back, let's put emphasis on the fact that he died. Um, and that's all it really had to do with Civil War. This one has more to do, and it's, it's Sam Wilson dealing with how he feels about the whole, can we, um, can we arrest people before they do something, even if we think we know the future? And, and he's taught, he's having just conversations. I really like that. He's not fighting. He's having actual down to earth conversations with Captain Marvel and Tony Stark and how he doesn't really like either of, like he, he agrees ultimately with Tony's viewpoint. Um, but he doesn't like Tony Stark very much, just as a person. Uh, like, at the end of their little get-together or whatever, um, Tony offers to help fund all this stuff that Sam's trying to do. And he's like, really? Now you're just trying to buy me off? He's like, hey, no, it's not like that. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to help out, man. And he's like, just stop, man. Tony, you really are something. Even when you're right, you're an ass. I really like that. Um, and so he's just dealing with that. But ultimately, I really like why uh, Sam decides to be on Tony's side. And keep in mind, I'm not reading Civil War. You know if you're watching this show. I really like why Sam decides to, to stick with Tony. He's like They really go back and forth with these conversations that, that Sam, Tony, Captain Marvel are all having with Sam. And um, Sam's big thing is uh, there's something no one is giving me a straight answer on. And they're talking about this guy that can see the future. How does it work? And Captain Marvel says, well, I'm not a scientist. Iron Man says, I am a scientist. Captain Marvel says, he sees the future. Iron Man, he doesn't see the future. Iron Man, prevailing theory is he's processing some kind of algorithm, determining probability curves, assessing risk level, all on a level beyond even my best quantum computers. And this matters, Sam and Captain Marvel. It doesn't matter how it works. The point is it does. And everybody wants to be high-minded and take a stand on principle here, but that's not where we live. We punch people for a living, and we do it for a good reason. Hell, I'm not even clear what the choice is here. If this kid tells us Los Angeles is about to be wiped off the map, we're supposed to, what, ignore him? We can't do that. Iron Man. We can't do this. If this kid is deriving things from statistical averages, background markers, social media posts, race or religion, anything... And call it whatever fancy acronym you want. And God knows I love a good acronym. But at the foundation, we both know what that is. And it's nothing new. It's Sam Wilson profiling. And so even though this is an issue that is heavily tied in with Civil War, it's still focusing primarily on what Sam Wilson is dealing with in his street-level 
inequality, there's something wrong with the direction we're taking approach to things. And so it's all about profiling for him. And that, that's why he's siding with Iron Man. And, and it ties into the larger story of these Americops that was set up in the last issue. Um, and that's really cool. I'm really excited to keep reading this. And now Sam is in just a shit position where he has to go protect the Americops because this hero named Rage is going to start some big fucking problems for this community. Um, and Sam is just in the middle of having, is, is about to go take a big bite out of a shit sandwich and he knows it and he can't stand it, but he's doing what he thinks is the right thing. I really like that. And then we have U.S. Agent um, coming into the story as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, next issue, the Americops want you. And let me say, um, one of these days I'm going to wake up to good news. I really hope so. But this book is incredibly fucking timely even when it's not trying to be. I want to try to find this speech that one of them gives. Mm. Rage gives this really good speech. He says, we live here. You, on the other hand, I've never seen before. And I've been here my whole life. I've seen how many fellows from around here you've put in the hospital or in lock up, lock up on some trumped up bullshit. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for going after criminals, but guys selling blue, like Blu-rays or cartons of cigarettes? It's not even... The, there was no way. The news broke last night. This has been printed and shipped out. And yet, replace the word Blu-rays with CDs. It's really hard to read this. Um, because it's so damn, hold on, last book of the week, uh, happier, more fun book, um, is Grant Morrison's 18 Days, number 13. Fantastic issue. Uh, there's only one moment I really, really want to talk about because it was just fucking hysterical. Um, so, refresh. Bima is on the ground, can't stand up to all these war elephants that are, um, and these guys that are attacking him. As a last word, he says his son's name. And earlier it was set up that his son told him, all you have to do is say my name and I will be by your side in a heartbeat. And so he says his son's name and passes out. And then his son, who's like half demon or whatever, shows up and just fucking destroys everybody. And he picks up an elephant. And then we cut to uh, Doranda and, and one of his advisors. And Doranda's like, what's happening? I can't see anything. That storm's unnatural. It's blocking all wavelengths. He's like, uh, I suggest we move, sire, swiftly. What? Why? Now, sire. And they jump, and the elephant crashes down on their, like, floaty platform thing, and they land on the ground. And he's like, what? What just happened? Someone threw an elephant at us, sire. Most accurately, I may add. Why did they do that? They couldn't find anything heavier? <laughs> right? Right? Why else throw an elephant? 
Oh, that was really cool. Really fun issue. Um, and, and also really touching, really neat. Uh, Bima comes in and, and wins the battle and, you know, kills a war cybernetically enhanced war elephant. That's really fucking cool to say. I want a cybernetically enhanced war elephant for Christmas. Get on it, subscribers that are truly loyal to this channel. Um... And just, it's like, it's touching, but it's also batshit crazy awesome at the same time. So I really love it. Uh, and then we get, you know, a nice little touching moment at the end. And Shiva's there too. And Doranda's there. And, and we're left with this really ominous ending. He's like, we've... You're right, as ever, loyal Dorna. We have greater weapons in our arsenal. The time for holding back is over. Bring forth the god weapons. Uh, and keep in mind, one of the weapons used was an arrow that caused a nuclear explosion. On the, and that ended the first day of the war. Well, shit. Uh, I'm curious to see what the big weapons are going to be. Um, really, really cool book. I really enjoy that thing. Uh, that was more of just a really fun, really neat, interesting issue. Um... But I'm really excited to keep reading more. The trades are available for that. And I, I will say it'll probably read better in trade. But I'm not having too much trouble outside of the names. Um, remembering what happened issue to issue. Um, it was a bit of a slow start. But now it's really picking up and, and quite working quite well for me. So I really am enjoying that book. And I highly recommend it to people. Okay, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time.